Well, tonight, um, almost is a, it's almost like a, an addendum or a, an attachment onto Pastor Isaac's text this morning when Paul talks about in Philippians 3, I want to know the power of the resurrection in my life. I want to know the power of the resurrection. Sometimes it's, it's a little abstract for us to like grab a hold of, what does that mean? And I hope tonight through this story um, of Mary Magdalene that you can uh, grab a hold of that um, a little bit uh, because I think it was Paul's uh, passion that all of us experience the power of the resurrection of Jesus in our lives. Uh, and so the story of Mary Magdalene is an amazing story of that resurrection power. Well, as I was getting ready to say, uh, sometimes when we talk about the power of the resurrection, it kind of is abstract to us. Like, what does that mean? And so Scripture gives us some very powerful stories of resurrection life happening in people. And tonight, I want to tell you a little bit about Mary's story, Mary Magdalene. She sat there with tears streaming down her face. Her whole world had collapsed. She sat there with her friend in the garden opposite the tomb. Her whole body ached with pain. And her heart had been just completely shattered by sorrow. Maybe you've experienced that when you've lost a dear friend or loved one. It was as if the whole world was a strange blur of events. Like somebody picked her up and put her in an unfamiliar forest of grief. And her heart had been completely shattered. She watched two of Jesus' secret followers, Joseph and Nicodemus, carry the dead Jesus into a tomb carved out of the side of a rocky hill. His body was wrapped in strips of white cloth with preserving spices clinging to his bloodied, mangled body. The hardest truth that she was there forced to swallow was that Jesus was dead. Oh, how she loved Jesus. Her thoughts went back to the day that Jesus came to her town in Magdala. Once Magdala, that city, it was this amazing city that had this incredible tower and fortress. And everybody came to Magdala, the town, to see this incredible tower that people had built. But by the time that Jesus arrived at her town, it was a little run down. And it was a little broken. In fact, when Jesus came, this is Jenga, by the way. Anybody Jenga fans? Yeah, there we go. So what I'm about to do, I'm sorry. <laughs> but when he came, that's what her tower looked like. That's what Magdala was. It was ruins. The word Magdala, where Magdalene comes from, where Mary gets her name, it means tower, something strong, something that you can stand on. And when you get up in a tower, you can just see for miles around. But the problem was when Jesus arrived at Magdala to visit Mary, to encounter Mary, he came to a broken, run-down town whose tower had long been destroyed by the things of the world and the brokenness that the world surrounds itself in. And so when he arrived, it was just shambles and, and pieces. And that's how he met Mary, too. See, Mary was a woman who was broken. Scripture records that she had kind of seven demons like possessing her and leading her life. And she was enslaved by it. Enslaved by the brokenness around her. Probably used and abused. And so the broken down town and a broken down Mary. And Jesus met her. He met her in her broken town and in her broken situation. And he called her by name. And he said, Mary, I've come to bring good news that you can be free. And she remembered when she first believed that Jesus could set her free. 
And you know, just like Jesus does when we offer ourselves to him, Jesus begins to put back the pieces of our broken life together and make it into something even more beautiful than it was before it was broken. That's the good news. And so he began to do this. And, and Mary, because she was so grateful and out of her great love for what Jesus had done in rescuing her, she began to follow Jesus and to provide for his needs and the disciples' needs along with many other women. She remembered that well when she sat there opposite the tomb, hardly breathing that the one who had rescued her from the very depths of sin and brokenness was now dead in the tomb. Mary's life had been in ruins. Have you ever been in ruins? Have you ever felt like the world was crashing down on you, that somebody just came along and pushed over the tower of your life? It's my suspicion that all of us have been there. Maybe some of us tonight find ourselves there, broken. Maybe you experience this brokenness because of the sin in your life, choices that you've made that caused you more brokenness. At first, it seemed very great that it was going to solve all your problems and, and find that deep meaning that we all long for. But in the end, it just left you more broken and wanting for something to make you whole again. Or maybe it was someone else's sin in your life because you love. Risk, love is a risk. There's no escaping it. When you love people deeply, you risk being hurt. You can't avoid it. So maybe some of you have felt broken because somebody who you love deeply hurt you deeply or sinned against you deeply. Or maybe for some of us, we walk around every day in a very broken world, like sin has broken our relationships and our world is broken and we see that every day. We sit down and we watch the evening news and much of our newscast is about the brokenness of our world and how we treat one another in a way that God never intended for us to treat one another. So maybe you feel broken because you are in the midst of a broken world. From that time on, Mary, she followed Jesus with a group of women and she took care of Jesus' needs. She served Jesus as Jesus taught and preached and healed the blind, made people walk again. And has, it was a great metaphor because as Jesus made people walk again in the sea, as Mary followed Jesus, she was beginning to see the world in the way that God sees the world. And just like Jesus would heal the lame, she was beginning to walk and to move in ways that God had created her to walk and to move and to live. She was finding eternal life, abundant life, as she served Jesus. Jesus was dead as she sat there opposite the tomb. What a sacrifice. She gave up everything in her life to follow and serve Jesus. She left her social space, kind of the comfortableness. Even Magdala, even as broken as Magdala was, it was comfortable. Have you ever felt comfortable in your brokenness or your sin and it just felt comfortable? Jesus has to come along and remind us that we weren't created to live in that way. But she left all of that behind, the security of Magdala behind, the brokenness of Magdala behind. She left the ruins of life of slavery to sin. She stood with this new twinkling in her eye every moment that she served Jesus and walked with Jesus as Jesus taught and healed during his public ministry. What a sacrifice. She would leave home family and her role and duty to accompany Jesus, to serve Jesus those three and a half years of Jesus' public ministry. Because when Jesus caused her to stand, when, when Jesus gave her new life, the only response that she knew 
was to give her life completely to Jesus. Have you ever offered your life completely to Jesus? I mean everything. Have you ever reached the point where you're just like, Lord, see all of me? It's all yours. It's all yours. That's where she was. That's where she was living. We have a name for that in the church of the Nazarene. It's called the sanctified life, the holy life, the all-in life, the life that says all that I am and all that I have is all yours, Lord. I put myself in your hands. I am your living sacrifice. It's the best place to live. It's the best life possible. There's nothing greater. And Mary discovered that. But that was then. Now things were terribly different. Jesus was dead. He was gone. From a distance, Mary Magdalene, scriptures say, watched the whole tragic event as Jesus was crucified. She watched the soldiers strip Jesus of all his clothes and gamble for his, the possession of them. She watched the nails in his wrists. She saw them pound a spike through both his feet. She heard the insults of the robbers crucified with him. How could they say such things? Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. She heard the chief priests and the teachers of the law echo out loudly. He saved others, but he can't even save himself. Look at him. He's the king of Israel? Come on. Let him come down from the cross now. We'll believe in him then. He trusts God. Let God rescue him. She heard others come by and spit on Jesus and cast wicked looks his way, disgracing his name, the one who had given her life. And then through all the tears, in that horrific moment, she saw Jesus breathe his last and say, it's finished. And with that, he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. She saw him taken down from the tomb, laid in the tomb. All of this was running through Mary's mind as she and a friend were sitting there opposite the tomb. But that was Friday. And the good news for our text tonight is we're going to read the Sunday text, the Resurrection Day text. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to John 20, 10 through 16? I want to read this for us. John 20, 10 through 16. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. But now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. Saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't recognize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if, if you've carried him away, just tell me. Just tell me where you put him, and I'll go get him. And Jesus said, the very name that he said when he met her in Magdala, the name for the last two days that she had longed to hear echoed and said and realized. Jesus said, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni! You can imagine the, the complete joy that she would have had to hear Jesus say her name. And Jesus said, Don't hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God 
and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I've seen the Lord. You could imagine the joy and the loud voice that she would have used. And when people are like, oh, seriously, no, I've seen the Lord. I promise you. You know, you've seen something really amazing and people aren't believing you. It's that kind of moment for her, right? I've seen the Lord. And she told them that, she, that he had said these things to her. Tonight, I just want to share a few things, maybe three things that I believe that Jesus does when he resurrects people. Here is the resurrected Jesus on that first Sunday. And he encounters Mary, who's very broken. What does Jesus do? What does the resurrected Jesus do to resurrect people? There's at least three things here that I just want to point out. Resurrection, this this whole passage is about resurrection and what resurrection life looks like. And resurrection has, it's this amazing word that literally means, okay, I'm going to need Riley. Riley, come on up, man. All right. I'm going to trust you with my life. All right. With my life. So let's just say, and now I know what a broken bone feels like because I've had one recently. <laughs> let's, just say, let's just say I was playing softball, right? And I broke a bone. Totally, yeah, hypothetically speaking. I mean, never happens. But say I, this time I broke my leg, right? And if I broke my leg, could I stand? No, I'd be broken, right? So I'm going to fall. Come on over. Come closer. So I'm, I'm falling because I'm broken, broken my leg, and I'm down here on the ground. I've broken it. I, this one's broken too, I guess. They're both broken. And I'm just on the ground. Now, I need to get to the doctor, right, Riley? Yeah. How am I going to get to the doctor? You're just going just gonna to leave me here? You're going to pick me up, right? Can you pick me up? You're a strong dude. Yeah, so he's going to pick me up. See that picture right there? That's the picture of resurrection. Give it up for Riley. Good job, man. That's well done. Not scripted one bit, no. But that picture of him picking me up when I couldn't stand on my own, there's somebody right beside me that's causing me to stand. That's the picture of resurrection. When God resurrects you and gives you new life, it's not that we could ever stand on our own, but that God meets us where we're at and he causes us to stand. And by the way, God keeps doing that throughout our lives. You see, that's, uh, it's just a beautiful picture of, of resurrection. I remember um, not too long ago uh, helping Lily learn to walk. And Jan and I both, like, it was such a joy. If you ever have a chance to, like, watch a child, like, learn to walk, it's really humbling in some ways because you're like, I'm going to drop you and it's going to hurt sometimes. And I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, but uh, when Lily was learning to walk, she's crawling around, and finally she kind of gets to the, the point where she's, like, trying to stand, and she kind of still does have that wobble. If you ever watch Lily, she's got that, like, sweet swag wobble that's going on, man. It's just, like, it's so cute. It's awesome. Uh, but uh, when she was learning how to walk, like, Jan and I would help her stand up, right? And, like, you remember, well, you probably don't remember because I don't remember trying to walk for the first time, but you're just kind of uneasy, and you're, like, you know, like, trying to stand up. Mom and dad is right there with you. There's somebody right there with you, causing you to stand. And what are they saying to you? Ah, sit down. You can't do this. Man, it's taking you forever to stand up. Let's go. No. A loving mother and father say, come on, you can do this. I'll help you. I'll help you stand. Resurrection life is the very God of all creation saying to you and to me and to our church, oh, come on, I'll help you stand. I know you've been broken by the world. I know you've been broken by sin. I know you've been hurt. But I've come to give you new life and cause you to stand. So Jesus is resurrected and he meets Mary. Mary. And what do we see the resurrected Jesus do? The first thing that we see Jesus, the resurrected Jesus do? The resurrected Jesus meets Mary, where? In her crying. In her search for meaning. 
and Jesus uses this amazing words. These, these questions that Jesus I used to read this and like, man, Jesus, seriously, get a clue. She's looking for you. Jesus isn't saying these questions to her because he doesn't know the answer. He's saying it because he's identifying with right where she's at. And she says, woman, why are you crying? In other words, what's causing you pain? What's hurting you? What's broken your very depths of your heart? See, that's where the resurrected Jesus goes. He doesn't just wait till we're whole and healed. He goes to our brokenness. He goes to our hurt and our crying and our suffering. He says, I love you. I've been raised from the dead. And I've come to bring you back from the dead. It's resurrection life. And then lo- I love this question. And I think this is a question that us followers of Jesus are meant to ask ourselves too. So tonight at home sometime or tomorrow or this week, I'd love for you to think about this question that Jesus asks Mary. Who is it that you're looking for? Duh, she's looking for Jesus. Obviously. But it's more than that. It's the question that Jesus asks us as his followers or anyone. What are you looking for? In other words, what do you want? What meaning are you looking for in your life? And of course, for Mary, she's looking for Jesus. And you see, that's, as followers of Christ, that's our answer too. Like, who are we looking for? The the number one thing that our passionate pursuit is always for more of Jesus. To know him more, as our text said this morning. Pastor Isaac preached on. The next thing, not only does Jesus meet her in her crying, meets her right where she is in her brokenness, right by the tomb, the the dead places of her life. But Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, calls Mary by name. And he helps her really see the world around her. Remember, she didn't even know that it was Jesus. Part of that was because Jesus is like in this new resurrected body, which one day, that's good news for you folks. You know, if you start, like, I'm only 37, so many of you are like, dude, you're still young. You don't even know the half of it yet. And you're absolutely right. (laughs) But I'm heading there, friends. (laughs) But there's a resurrected body coming that Jesus is the first fruits of that comes with a new heavens and a new earth. But, But she couldn't recognize him. But when Jesus said her name, it opened her eyes to the reality that Jesus had been there the whole time. Where do you find it hard to see Jesus at work? At school? In your jobs? Maybe sometimes at a family gathering. The good news is the resurrected Jesus is there. And we invite him to say, God, help me to see you here. Mary. Jesus... The resurrected Jesus calls Mary by name, just like he calls you and me by name. He calls our church by name. He calls his bride by name, the body of Christ that's all over the world by name. And he helps us see the world the way that God sees the world. Because without God, we can't see the world the way that God does. We need him to help us like he helped Mary. And then the third thing, not only does the resurrected Jesus meet Mary in her crying, And help her in her search for meaning. Not only does the resurrected Jesus call her by name and help her see the world for what it really is. But finally, the resurrected Jesus brings resurrection life by giving her a mission to go and tell. Now, this was crazy in the time. In the first century, if you wanted something to be real and you wanted people to believe it, you didn't tell a woman to go tell people. Because in those days, people did not believe the testimony of a woman. But what do we see Jesus do? Jesus is like, that's ridiculous. That's broken. And I'm about to fix it right here on resurrection day one. Because I'm going to entrust Mary Magdalene, the woman that was, had seven demons and she was broken and from this obscure, broken town that nobody wanted to be from anymore. He allowed her to be the bearer of the good news of Jesus for the first time to everybody. 
How amazing is Jesus that he would choose Mary? It shows you the depths and love of who God is. God doesn't look at people the way that we do. What does scripture say? He looks at the heart. The resurrected Jesus gives Mary a mission. You know, sometimes I think that we don't pursue the mission of God in our lives because we can't really believe that God is actually calling us. What do I have to offer? And honestly, if we're truthful, not a whole lot. But the Jesus who calls us is also the one who equips us. And he gives us all that we need and even more to make a difference in Olathe, Gardner, Edgerton. <laughs> we were talking about Edgerton earlier. And all over the world because he's given us a mission. And what's the mission? What do we go and say? Well, we go and say the very same thing that Mary says. I've seen the Lord. He's done a work in my life. When's the last time that you or me told somebody about what Jesus was doing in our lives? Like outside of these four walls and outside of youth group, like people that don't know how good Jesus is. When's the last time we told people who don't know how good Jesus is, how good Jesus has been to us and that we've seen God? He gives Mary this mission. That's what resurrection life, when Paul talks about knowing resurrection life, he's He's kind of, all of these things are in mind. The resurrected Jesus meets us in our brokenness and causes us to stand. He calls us by name and helps us see the world around us. To live a resurrected life means that we have a mission to go and to tell. And that you could almost, the, the excitement of her voice is almost dripping off the page. When's the last time that I got excited? I, I, this, this is painful for me, me to say, but when's the last time I got that excited about saying, I've seen the Lord. He's doing some amazing things. He, he found me like this. And just like Jenga, he's like singing the Jenga song. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. And he's, he's like picking up all these pieces. And what I thought were broken and, and forever. And, and he's bringing his healing. And he's restoring this tower that I thought was beyond repair. And by the way, this isn't just our individual lives. But even more than this, this is us individually. Like he takes us. Like all of our broken lives. And Jesus just starts putting them together, man. Like young, old, poor, rich, black white, wherever you're from, whatever tiny little town you were from, however significant the place you were birthed into, Jesus puts all of that together. And then he sends us out on mission and says, go, go and tell people that you've seen the Lord, that he's done something amazing at West Side Nazarene Church. That should get us excited when we truly experience his resurrected life among us, then we go and we proclaim his good news. The resurrected Jesus meets Mary in her crying. He meets, meets her in her place of need, calls her by name, helps her see the world around her. And the resurrected Jesus gives her this amazing mission. Even Mary, nobody would give Mary a mission in the first century, but Jesus did. Because he loved her and he equipped her and he gifted her and he created her in his image just like he did you and me. And I know sometimes it's hard to believe that you're created in God's image, but it's true. Because the world tells you something that you're not. Sometimes we have to stop believing what the world tells us who we are. We need to start believing who Jesus tells us we are. And then we can go and be free. And by the way, not only does Jesus do this in us, but because we, the, the amazing thing is the resurrection that Jesus does in us, it doesn't just stay with us. Jesus calls us to go and to participate in the ways that he's resurrecting and bringing new life to people. That power of resurrection that's at work in you and me is meant to go and to be a part of his resurrection in the world. I wonder what God would want to, how God would want to use you this week 
to be a part of his resurrection plan, his new life plan. Maybe it looks like meeting a friend in their tears. Maybe it looks like just calling somebody new that you just met by name. Isn't it, ama- isn't it amazing how much we like to, we know it when people know our name? It means something. Sometimes living a resurrected life is just as simple as doing the common act of calling somebody by their name, remembering their name, helping them see the world around them. Maybe, maybe it's going to tell somebody your testimony, what God's done in your life this week, to somebody that really doesn't believe that God is good anymore. Whatever it is, God wants to use you to bring his resurrection life to people. He wants to resurrect you to help be a part of his resurrection in the world. Let's pray. God, thank you so much. Thank you for your good news. Um, Lord, I, I thank you for what you did in Mary's life and the ways that you're calling us to be a part of your life. God, thank you for finding me in my brokenness and in my pain and in my small town in northeast Indiana and giving me hope, giving me life, and showing me your love. I'll never be the same because of that, Jesus. So thank you for the resurrection stories that fill this room. So bind us together, Lord. Knit us together into this beautiful mosaic. Send us out into our world to be a part of your resurrecting new life in places that are broken, dried up, and dead. For your glory and for your kingdom, God, help us in that. Give us eyes to see just like you helped Mary see, give us eyes to see your work everywhere that we go. We thank you, Jesus, and we love you. In Christ's name, amen. May you go in the power of the resurrection and find ways to be a part of God's resurrection.